That is here now. Bring me to my knees somehow. Stir your spirit in me right now. My eyes lift, my heart turns to you. The way and the life and. The truth. Praise your name, highly exalted. Jesus, you are all I need. I need.
I feel your spirit moving right now It's your presence that is here now Bring me to my knees somehow Stir your spirit in me right now I bring my pain I bring my sorrow I lay it all down today You give me hope Covered in your grace My sins wash Sorrow, I lay it all down today. You give me hope, covered in your grace. My sins washed away. I feel your spirit moving around now. It's your presence that is here now. Bring me to my
us with your Hey everybody, welcome to New Hope Online. I am Pastor Josh. It is a blessing to be here with you again for another week of worship. Our hearts are ready to worship. We pray that your hearts are ready to worship. Let me pray real fast and we will jump into this time together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we, we come fully expecting you to be at work. We know your presence is with us. Lord, and so we just lift up these songs to you, we lift up these words to you, and we lift up our hearts to you and our eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wherever you are this morning, stand and worship with us. Philippians 2 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's worship. Come on. For the sins of the world, 
Good morning. I am Miss Lauren, and I am so glad you are here for our children's devotion. So kids, have you ever gone to McDonald's on a bad day and received a sad meal? Has anyone ever gone to McDonald's and received a sad meal? Well, McDonald's doesn't sell sad meals. They only sell Happy Meals. And on every day, good or bad, they still sell Happy Meals. On your absolute worst day of your life, it's still a Happy Meal. Happy Meals are Happy Meals in the good times and in the bad times. And God is still God, no matter if we are having a good day or a bad day. And God is still good in good times and bad times. No matter how hard things get, never lose heart. Never lose your faith because God is God and he is good. Rain or shine, good or bad, in the chaos, in the peace, God is God and he is good. And boys and girls, when we share, share this kind of faith with the world around us, God will shine through each one of you, even on your worst day. 
And that's so you can share his love and goodness with someone else who may need it. So today's bottom line is this. God is God and he is good. Psalm 34, 8 says this. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, you are good, and you never change. God, you are always God, and we praise you. We praise you in the good. We praise you in the bad, God. And we just thank you, God, that we know we can trust you. We love you, Lord, and we give you the rest of this time as we worship you, a good God who is always good. In your name, Jesus, amen. Man, everybody wants a Happy Meal now, right? <laughs> Let's continue to worship. We're going to lift up a hallelujah. Come on. Wherever you are this morning, clap your hands. Here we go. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Come on, get your march on this morning. Yeah. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Come on I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody
your name, Lord Jesus, the name that is above every name, the only name that can bring healing, not just during this difficult time, but all the time. We praise you for what you're doing in our homes right now, Lord, as we're worshiping with our families. You are there. You are here. Lord, I pray that our worship would overflow outside of the doors of our homes and into our neighbors' homes. 
that our relationships would grow stronger during this time. I praise you. Continue to work during the service, Lord, as Pastor Josh comes to bring your word. We're believing for good things in the future, Lord, because you are a good God. And you love us. You have a plan. Help us to trust in that plan. We praise your name. The mighty, loving, powerful, caring name of Jesus. Amen. Amen to that powerful time of worship. Before I bring the message of the second week of Be Still and Know, this is a time in our service where we're going to take communion together. And if you are in your home with family or, or even, even by yourself right now, this is a time when you can commune with the Lord and just really develop that relationship. If I were to tie in communion this week with the worship service, and, and the whole direction we're going with, be still and know. Just think about for a second that Jesus is at the table with his disciples and he knows what's about to happen. He knows that he is about to be betrayed. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be brought through all these false trials. There's a whole lot of difficult things that are about to happen. But the thing that Jesus also sees is the victory on the other side of those trials. That's why we can be still and know. That's why he was still and knew in that moment that he was God and it was going to be okay. Victory would be accomplished for you and I through the power of Jesus Christ. I want to read to you from Luke 22, verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, Take this, divide it among you, for I tell you I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with me at the table. He was pointing out the struggle that was ahead. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. And then the disciples began questioning amongst themselves who it would be to betray. As we take these communion elements, the bread and the, and the juice that we have here, I want you to just go to God in prayer and maybe lift up where your heart is right now in this moment. Here we are reclining at the table of the Lord's Supper. All of these thoughts may be swirling in our minds, things swirling in our hearts. We've been a couple weeks now into a, a strange uh, situation. And who knows what's going on, but, but the Lord knows what's going on in our hearts. We're in the midst of a trial, but the Lord sees victory on the other side. Do you see that victory? So let me pray and then we'll go to the Lord together and we'll take these elements. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your body, which is broken. We thank you for your blood that was poured out. We thank you, Lord, that you had us in mind when you went to the cross and took on the sins of the world. Lord, you took it on. The battle was ahead and you took it head on. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the victory that you knew was coming and that we can read in your word every single day how the victory happened. And we thank you, Lord, that we can rest easy in knowing that you are victorious. And because we're your children, we're victorious in you. So we take these elements, Lord, in the power of your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. You may take these elements. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. At this time in our worship service, we're going to take...
our tithes and offerings. And normally, if we were in the church building all together, of course, I am here, we would be passing plates at this time. I just want to remind you that there is still plenty of opportunities for you to give. I know there are so many things going on right now that are asking for uh, money, finances, uh, different things. There's, there's concerns of jobs, all of these different things. But I would ask that you would remember the church as well, New Hope Community Church. Not only do we have things to maintain here as a facility, but we also have many missionaries locally and internationally who rely on us. Your giving supports them as well as what's happening right here in the community of this church, New Hope, that God has placed. So you can give online. You can click on the link that's right here on the side of the screen, no matter what page that you're, you're watching at this point. Click on that link and you can give online and set up an account. Or you can go to your bank and put a phone call into your bank or do online banking and set it up so you can give to the church. Or you can also mail in your tithe to the church as well. New Hope Community Church, 605 Wilson Pike, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. So as you do one of those three things, let me just pray a blessing that the Lord will pour out on you in your giving as you give cheerfully. Dear Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that when we give cheerfully, Lord, you promise to provide. You take care of us. All of us who are watching right now are able to watch because, Lord, you are our provider. You have provided ways for us to exist, to live, to get us through each day, whether that be financially, our health, whatever it may be, Lord, you are there and you are taking care of us. So, Lord, we pray for your blessing to be upon these gifts, the giving that we are giving back to you. You gave it to us in the first place. Now, Lord, here is the first fruits. We pray your hand be upon it, Lord, and bless it in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen. Just a couple things I want to tell you about as you're going online right now and doing that whole giving thing. Uh, after the worship service today, the church will be sending out what, what would have been our normal town hall meeting. Uh, is actually going to be something we're going to email communications out to you. We have a couple of the elders and who have written up some communications that's going to go out to the members of the congregation so you can read where the church is in a financial report to the congregation. You'll also be able to read some of the projects and things we were working on before uh, this, the uh, situation we're in now, the live streaming and all that happened. And so we'll have updates on that. And then I will write a personal update as well of some things that we're working on as a staff and with the church and how we're doing in, throughout this whole process. And so that information will be out to you. And you'll be able to respond to those messages that we send out. If you have a question or something were to come up that you wanted to know, have an answer to, you can respond to our message and we'll try and have an elder get back to you and answer as best as we can your questions. And so those are just a couple of things going on. Please continue to pray for us as we do these live streaming services. Please continue to pray that the Lord would wipe out this virus that's going around. We know that God is a God of miracles. He is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And my prayer is that we will be able to be back in this room all together soon worshiping in his name because that is going to be powerful when that day comes, and I'm looking forward to it. We are in week two of the Be Still and Know series, and I'm so excited to be able to share this message with you today. And we're going to go right into one of the Psalms. Last week we did Psalm 121. This week we're going to start off with Psalm 46. And I'm going to read you verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. A few weeks ago, I flew out to 
Arizona with a couple of my friends. Our plans were simple. We were going to drive, we were going to fly out there, and we we're going to drive over and watch some spring training baseball games. It was going to be awesome. It was going to be sunny. It was not going to happen. Because as you know, just like all of us, all of the plans that we had got canceled a few weeks ago when society and culture and the world got turned on its ear by what's going on right now. So anyway, my friends and I thought, should we still do this trip? What, what's going to happen? And we, we said, well, let's just do it anyway. I had never been out. I've, I've had a few times where I've been out west, but never really had a chance to explore things. So a friend of mine, Dan, uh, I talked to him and I said, hey, let's just go out there. Let's drive around. We'll, we'll go do some fun things. We'll fly into Vegas, we'll rent a car, and we'll drive down to Phoenix, and we'll hit Route 66 and all the fun scenic attractions along the way and just have a blast doing those things. So we did it. And let me tell you right now, that is probably my most, most favorite drive that I have ever done. We got to see the Hoover Dam. We saw these beautiful red rocks. We, we would have had a chance to see the Grand Canyon, but we didn't have enough time. And we stopped at all these weird places along Route 66. If you've never done that before, I highly recommend the weirdness of that whole thing because there's some cool stops along the way for tourists that you can see and, and shop owners try to make things look really cool. But the, the red rocks and all of the scenery and the desert and all of that, you would think, not that much beauty, but I was just in awe the whole time of this creation and things around me. Another cool part of it was we got to experience all of the seasons in one drive. So we land and it's 70 degrees and we're in shorts and we start driving and we eventually get to Flagstaff, Arizona, which is when we were at the highest point, roughly about 8,000 or so uh, above sea level. So we're up in the mountains, and it's just snowing. It's, it's pretty much a blizzard. We were planning on stopping in Flagstaff, but we couldn't because it's under 30 degrees and snowing, and we're in shorts. So we just keep driving, and I say to my friend Dan, how about we go the long route down south to Phoenix, and we go to this town called Sedona. Now, some of you may have been to Sedona before. If you have not... I'm, they're not paying me to say this. I highly recommend you do this drive from Flagstaff, Arizona to Sedona, Arizona, because it's probably the most beautiful drive that I've ever done. We were up around 8,000 you know, feet up in the air, coming on this mountain, and the drive just takes you down the mountain through the crevices and through the hills, and not even hills, these are mountains, folks. And you just see these caverns of rock on each side of you on the road. And there's such beauty, such beauty along this drive. And as we're going and weaving and going down and the temperature's going up and it's getting nicer again. And we're going through the mountains and there's this roaring river next to us at the bottom of the mountain. And you look up and you see these signs that say, watch out for falling rocks. Watch out for road washing away. Watch out for all of these different things that, that could pop up in the beauty of this mountainous area. And yet, there we were, my friend and I, in this car, in the beauty of this moment. Rocks could be falling down the hill, but here we were in this peaceful moment. And all I, in my heart, could feel was, rest, Selah. Selah is a word that is used in the Psalms around, it's 71 times it's in the Psalms. There's some debate among scholars of what the, the meaning of the word actually is. Is it a musical notation term? Because a lot of the Psalms are, are songs that are meant to be sung by choirs and, and played and by musicians and different things. Is it a notation term of music that is meant to pause the music? Some dispute that. Is it a direction for singers when they say Selah, that it's something is sung, and then Selah is saying, sing it louder, sing a little louder, like we sang in the, in the praise time? Or is it a musical term for an overall musical program? Almost like Selah is an intermission in the program. Let's take a break and just rest. Now for me, in the purpose of this scripture, the reason why I said Selah in that moment with the mountains and all those things is because I love reading the word Selah and looking at it as a word that means rest, pause, reflect on what you just read, what you just went over in scripture. It brings for me a sense of peace and affirmation. 
It's a reminder to dwell, to dwell on the Word of God and the Scripture that is right in front of us. And if we look at Psalm 46, just think of these words just for a moment. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So do not fear when the mountains move, when the rocks come down the hill. Or the rivers roar, the river, the roaring rapids that were there right next to my friend and I on the side of the road. And there's just a little edge that you could go down. Do not fear of any of those things. Selah, rest, take a breath. God's got you right in the palm of his hand. Notice how in Psalm 46 it says God is our refuge. It doesn't say God is your refuge. We look, at, we look at things as individuals a lot of times when we read Scripture. God is my refuge and strength. God is mine. God is mine. But in this passage, God is talking to a group. It's a promise to a nation and to a people as a whole. God is our refuge and strength. A reminder that God is in control. So that's verses 1 through 3. But in 4 through 7 then, he says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Once again, he is our fortress rest. Have peace in that. Take comfort in that fact. Isn't it fascinating if I were to go back to verse 3, and verse 3 speaks of waters raging and foaming, but in verse 4, God immediately jumps into, there is a river whose streams make, the, make glad the city of God. Picture with me. So if you took verses 3 and verse 4, Picture this roaring rapids of a river that then opens up into the calmness of open water. That's where God is. See, right now we might be in the rapids and the craziness and all these things and the white water and when's this going to end and what are we going to do? And God would say, look ahead to the open water of calm that lies just ahead. And God would say, that's where I am. That's where I reside in the midst of that peace. So when you feel a roaring of fear in your spirit or an uneasiness because you just don't know the future and guess what, you never will, close your eyes and go down to the river, down to the river. Some of you know that song. Down to the river to pray, to the river of peace where God resides. And it's there, when you get to that river of peace, that you'll be able to just take a breath. <sighs> Selah. Selah. God is our refuge. God is our strength in times of trouble. Notice it doesn't say God is our refuge and God is our strength so that you never have times of trouble. It says in times of trouble. Pastor Tony Evans says, true peace is where God's calm overrules your concerns. God's calm overrules your concerns. Are you at peace? Do you need the peace of the Lord in your life? Do you need to jump out of these rapids and the roaring waters and look ahead to the calm waters of where God is residing? Now, the disciples learned this in one popular story from the Gospels, and we're going to go over it. It's the story of Jesus calming the storm. Now, Jesus had been teaching to large crowds everywhere that he went. And at one particular point, because he kept getting challenged by Pharisees and kept getting challenged by religious leaders, he began to then speak in parables. Parables were stories with hidden meanings that had to be figured out or translated. Jesus often was asked by his disciples, what did that parable mean? And Jesus would explain it. 
So Jesus goes through this time of teaching where he's with crowds and he's been teaching one parable after another, one parable after another. All of this teaching is taking place. How many of you know that when teaching is going on, eventually a test is coming? A test is coming to see what have you learned through all of this teaching. And that is where the story takes place in the book of Mark. So we're going to go to Mark chapter 4. This is in verse 35 through 41 is the story of Jesus calming the storm. I'm going to take a couple verses at a time. So after Jesus had taught and he was delivering some parables, they have this happen. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. Now, one of the things that I, I love to do is take scriptures that we've read many times before and start pointing out some things that maybe we've missed over the years or whatever it may be. If you're new to the story right now and this is the first time you've heard the scripture, maybe there's some things that you already missed in it when I just read that. But look at this. Two points I want to show to you. Jesus tells his disciples, let us go across to the other side. In other words, when Jesus says, here's where we're going to go, at what point do we believe him in faith that that's where we're going to end up? So when he says to the disciples, we're going to go to the other, this, the other side, that probably should have instilled a sense of some faith in the disciples to go, I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to be there and everything's going to be okay. So that's point number one. The second one was this, the disciples and Jesus were in a boat, and the last part of that verse says, and other boats were with them. Y'all listen, for some reason in my mind, I don't know if I've blocked it out or whatever it may be, I've never thought of this story of Jesus calming the storm, of them being in a boat surrounded by other boats. But it says right here in scripture, there were other boats with them there. I have seen pictures and illustrations of this story, and never have I seen Jesus' boat surrounded by other boats. It's always their boat by itself. So here we have it. Jesus in the boat with the disciples. A storm kicks up, and there's other boats around them. And we pick it up in verse 37. A great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was filling with water. But he was in the stern, Jesus asleep on the cushion. The disciples couldn't even say, Jesus, take the wheel, because he was sleeping in the boat. And the disciples woke him and they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Notice, notice the phrasing of this question. Jesus, who is asleep in the boat, and the disciples wake him up and shake him, wake him up, and they say, do you not care that we are perishing? I mean, think about this question for just a moment. Why are they asking this question in the first place? If you're in a boat with Jesus and a storm kicks up and he is sleeping there, the Son of God sleeping there, he's calm, he's cool, he's collected, he's so at rest that he is actually resting. Wouldn't your heart think, I think we're going to be okay. He's at peace. I should be at peace. But instead they shake him. Do you not see that we are perishing? Oh, I'm telling you. I mean, there's times when I, I read the stories, my heart goes out to the disciples because they're, they're going through this. I'm no better than them. In fact, they're really more, the disciples are an example of how we would act if we were in that moment. It's how we do act when we're in this moment. But there are times when I like to think that I would have done better in a certain situation, and this is one of them. Like if that storm kicks up and Jesus is in my boat, I'm like, Jesus is in my boat. It's going to be all good. I'm pretty much going to be acting like Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump out on top of the boat going, I'm right here. Jesus is in the boat. Give me all you got, everything you have, and I have all this full confidence. I'd like to think I would be like that, but I'm not necessarily sure. But instead, we have disciples here whose minds and hearts and fear and everything just completely runs away with them, and fear takes over. Look at verse 39, because when they wake up Jesus and said, do you not even care that we're perishing? Verse 39 says, and he, Jesus, awoke 
And he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace! There's an exclamation point there. Peace! Be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. The wind ceased, and there was great calm when Jesus said, Peace, be still. Perhaps you need to look at those words a little more closely, those, those three words that Jesus says. Peace, be still. Where in your life right now do you need to take the words of Jesus and apply them to your life and speak to that situation right now, whatever it may be that is causing you to live in fear, that is causing you to live in stress, that is causing you to live overwhelmed, whatever it may be that's causing your heart to palpitate, do you need to say the words of Jesus? What's right here in the word? Peace. Be still. You have no place in me. Fear, get out. Peace, be still. You see, we need to be like Jesus who had the peace of God in the midst of a storm. You see, when you're in the middle of a storm and you're in the middle of chaos, that is one of the greatest moments where, where you can preach to people and speak to their hearts. Because when they see you going through a storm and you have the peace of God and the faith in Jesus through that storm, people look at you and they go, how are you, how are you doing this? And your response could, could be, it's not me. I have the peace of God in this storm. The river may be raging. It may be trying to take me somewhere, but I'm looking ahead to the open, calm waters where God resides. Because He is my refuge. He is my strength. A present help in times of struggle. Pastor John Corson says this, When we have the peace of God in our lives, other people around us will benefit from it as well because they will see God's faithfulness to us and see it at work. Now, why is that important? Because even in this story, there were other boats around them. There were other boats. How many times have you read the story and you think it only affected the disciples, but the truth of the matter is the storm was calm for the other boats? I bet you they had some fear. I bet you they had some things going on. But in this whole moment, Jesus says, peace, be still. And the peace of God brings this calmness over the waters. Those other boats, that'll preach. It was a message. It was a word. Go to God and say, Lord, give me a peace that surpasses all understanding. Help me in the midst of any storm, in the midst of any struggle, any trial, that I will have your peace, I will have your calm, because I want to preach through the way I live my life to other people. I want to preach this calm to them, to see that you, God, are faithful through every circumstance. In Mark 4, verse 40 and 41, Jesus after calming the storm, he turns to his disciples. He says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear, and they said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And once again, pay close attention to these verses, because Jesus could very well be looking at you and I when he is saying these things. Knowing all of the storms and the trouble that he has brought us through already, knowing the troubles and the struggles that Jesus has already brought you through, shouldn't that give you a peace in knowing that then any struggle or trial that comes down the way, he's going to bring you through that too? You're going to be okay. It may be difficult sitting in your house right now. When's this going to end? What are we going to do? How's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? What are, all, listen, folks, all I know is this. When you have God, you're going to be okay. When you have Jesus, you're going to be okay. And if your first response is to look back at me through this screen and go, Pastor Josh, but you just don't understand, then let me pray that you would have the peace of God and not the peace of this world. Because this isn't Pastor Josh just delivering words that are just on a piece of paper or what. This is God's word saying, you're going to be okay. 
This is Jesus saying, peace be still. Peace be still. Why are you so afraid, he said to them? Have you still no faith? So, so here's the message, though, that's, that's so powerful. Look what the disciples did when Jesus said these words to them. Why, why are you so afraid? Do you not have faith? In that moment, the disciples do what human beings love to do. And it's, it's, it's almost humorous, y'all. Listen. So the disciples were freaking out that they were going to die in the storm. Jesus gets up, rebukes the wind and the waves, and says, peace be still, and it stops. And then he said to the disciples, why didn't you have faith? And then it says right here in God's word that the disciples then were fearful of him because even the wind and the waves obey him. This is what we do as human beings. We trade our old fears for new fears. So this old fear, remember that thing you were scared of a couple years ago that never turned into anything and now it's gone and it's all thing of the past? But here's the new fear. I got a new fear now. Here's a new thing. Guess what? This whole thing we're going through right now, this 2020 thing, there's going to come a time when we're all going to look back on it. We're going to tell stories. We're going to have these moments of fear that we had and we're going to look back on those things. Now, I don't want to belittle anyone who's going through real circumstances and people who are in hospitals, any of those things. Those are real things, and we're praying and lifting, lifting you up in prayer and for healing. But for those of us going through these strange empty rooms and quarantines and all these things, we're going to talk about this time that we lived in fear. But a couple of years are going to go by, and it's going to be a memory. And we will have traded the fear that we have now for a new fear of whatever's going to be happening in 2021 or 2022, or 2023. Someone just said to me earlier today, hey, I don't know if you know this, but they're saying that even if it stops now, it could be back in six months. And then it could be back in a year like that. Listen, let's just trade fears. Let's just start kicking it down the road, and let's just be fearful of every single thing that comes along. Do you want to be fearful of everything, or do you want to stand back, say the words of Jesus, peace be still. Lord, calm my mind, calm my heart, calm all these fears. If I know anybody who is struggling and who is sick and who needs to be well, Lord, bring them healing. Lord, I see that you are at work. And Lord, in the midst of this storm, and it's a storm, folks, I see that you are God. I am not. You are in control. I am not. And so we go back to Psalm 46, verses 8 through 10. In all of these moments where God is saying, Selah, pause. But pause in what? Pause in what, Lord? And it's in verse 8 of Psalm 46. Come and behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And here it is, folks. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. These verses are a reminder that God is at work in this story. In, in Psalm 46, he's at work in destroying weapons that are formed against us. But for the sake of today, that could be sword or spear, or it could be viruses or diseases or anything. Any weapon that is formed against you shall not prosper under the Lord. That is a promise in his word. So you take that promise that is in his word, and because he's given you that promise, you recognize, I got Jesus in my boat. It's all good. It's going to be okay. And because he's in my boat, I'm going to be still and know that he is God. How do you be still and know that he is God? You be still and let God be God. You be you, let God be God. It's when you let God be God and trust in him as your refuge and your strength that God 
is truly exalted in your life. I don't care if you sing a song that says, He is exalted, the King is exalted. You could sing any song that you want and have words come out of your mouth. The truth is in the action. Will you let God be God? Will you let God bring this peace into your life that you need? To be still and know that He is God through every circumstance. Because when you truly are able to do that, that is when you are exalting God. Exalting is lifting up. When you turn it over to God completely, complete trust in Him, He is then exalted. That's when your words become real. That's when your actions show what you truly, truly believe. So to close this whole thing out, let me give you another way to look at this. We're living in some strange times right now. It's, believe you me, it may look like everyone who's on stage and, and doing this live stream worship service this morning, that hey, it's going pretty well. It's awkward for all of us. Everyone's doing the best they can and they're doing a wonderful job. I mean, you're in your living room right now or you could be somewhere watching this. I don't know what's going on, but we're quarantined away. All the things that we normally love to do are closed so there's plenty of ways to look at this from negative angles. But why not look at this from a positive angle? For example, here's a negative angle. The disciples were in the boat. The storm kicks up. They went negative. Why is this happening? Jesus doesn't even care. How easy for us to go negative in this. Why is this happening? I can't do this. My job, my family, the economy, the world. I'm fearful for my, my loved ones, my friends, their sickness, all of these things. And we can go negative and it's so easy to do that. But what's the positive? The disciples in that boat could have said, well, how dare this storm mess with us? Don't they know we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this boat? He's God. Jesus, can you get up for a minute and tell this storm that you're God? That's a positive way of looking at it. What's a positive way that we can look at today? That storm right now, this thing that's going on, quarantined away, I'm not worried. I'm not afraid. My family and I are going to be okay because I got Jesus in my boat. And that's where my trust is. And in all of this, this worldly chaos, my faith is building. It's given me strength. What I'm basically getting here is a faith workout because I have learned through all of these things that I don't have control over a whole lot of stuff. So now that I've learned that I don't have a whole lot of control on things, my faith is building because I'm able to put trust in the Son of God, the one who has control over all of these things. And that's where I'm at. So Jesus, I'm in the boat. Let's do this together. I know you love me, Lord, and I know that you care about me. You are my refuge. You are my strength. And I'm telling you, it'd be crazy if the Bible actually said something like this. And it just turns out, it does. James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. What do you do in the midst of chaos? What do you do in the midst of storm? What do you do when things seem to be crumbling? What do you do when you get bad news? What do you do in these moments? You count it all joy. How can you count it all joy? Because you follow the Son of God. The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Jesus and you have Jesus. James 1, verse 2 and 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So in all of these things, in all of these things, let me, let me challenge you to do what we, what we sang in these worship and praise songs this morning. We started off with a, a, a declaration that our God is the lion. 
the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Everything that comes against you will bow before him. So what do I do then? Because he is the Lion of Judah, I raise a hallelujah. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Why? Because he is the way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. My God, my God, that is who you are. Now, if you are sitting at home, what you just said was amen. Because that's what we should say in moments like those. Now, I don't want to be heartless. I know some may be going through some very difficult times right now. But Scripture tells us, count it all joy. When you turn and put your trust and hope in Jesus, count it all joy because he is giving you an opportunity to build your faith. What did he say to his disciples? Why did you not have faith? So let me just pray right now because we're going to go out of this service in full joy. We're going to go loud and sing praises and just lift it up because we want the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord to be at work in our lives. But I want to pray for you first. So if you're in your room right now, your living room, wherever you're watching this, just bow your head, close your eyes, pray this with me right now. Dear Jesus, I need you. I need peace. I need my fears calmed. I need you. So Lord, I take your words that say, peace be still. And I feel them wash over my life. I feel the calmness of the open water where you reside. I thank you, Lord, that you are at work. I thank you, Lord, that you have not left me. You have not forsaken me. Lord, I just, I can't contain it because there's joy in knowing how much you love me. So, Lord, build my faith in this moment. Build my faith in you as I go through this as my family goes through this, as we go through it together. Because as your word says, you are our refuge and strength. A very present help in times of struggle. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To close out this service, we wanted to sing a song that just brings joy into your home, that brings joy into your world. It's a song called, This is Joy. This is the last thing that we're going to do in this worship service today. So you can stand and sing with us if you want to. Or you can stay seated and sing if you want to. But either way, what I want you to know is that you can have the joy and peace of the Lord in your life today. Just say to that fear, peace be still. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this together. Amen. This is joy. Lord, you've given all the signs and wonders. Creation easy to see. With every morning, there's a new horizon. And you made it for me. There is hope in every trial and season, so consider it joy. You can praise in every situation, so we lift up our voice and we say, This is joy. prayer for you. May the God of all that's pure and holy make your heart overflow with the light of Jesus shining in you so the world will know this is joy. Oh, your love makes it real. It is more than just 
Amen. Thank you so much for joining us and being here with us this morning on this live stream, New Hope Online. We, it is such a blessing to be able to share this time with you. I want to remind New Hope Church members to be looking to your email. We'll be sending out our town hall meeting notes and communications here soon. But let me just lift up this time in prayer and just give a, a word of thanks to the Lord who brings peace to us. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your praise. Lord, thank you for your peace in our lives. And Lord, I just pray for whoever needs it, for your peace to just wash over them so they can be still and know that you are God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.